Well, greetings, everyone. Happy Monday to you. Uh, hopefully yesterday you had a great Lord's Day. Hopefully you was able to tune in to Pastor Moore with our services at 11 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Reminder, uh, we'll be back again on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. And of course, we'll be doing this over the internet uh, until this virus is all over. We can meet together again. We'll be doing something special this coming Sunday for the uh, Easter um, Sunday for uh, church time. And then, of course, for Sunday school hour as well, we'll have uh, we'll be looking at uh, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for our Sunday broadcast. Well, I started out this morning out on the deck. Uh, the sun is shining. The birds were chirping. Uh, the squirrel was eating out my bird feeder. Yes, I will take care of him later. And then the uh, woodchucks were chucking my wood. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm kidding about that part, but not squirrel. And uh, it was just a pretty pretty day, but the the breeze is blowing, and that interfered with the uh, sound quality. So I didn't want to do that. Uh, Lord willing, maybe tomorrow, another day soon, when it's warm outside, I will be able to get back outside and do five minutes with Brother Curtis. Hopefully, you was able to catch Fridays uh, as we looked at Proverbs chapter three, verse twenty-seven. I just want to tell you a quick story, something that happened that afternoon. I always do the broadcast in the morning, and uh, then study and everything, and I had some things I had to do. Remember, the governor said, if there's things you must do, then do this well. There were some things I must do, and so I was out doing this. Well, on the way back into town, my wife and I, we wanted to get something to eat before we headed back in. Friday's always our day. We try to always have a, kind of like a date day where we at least eat a meal with, among other things they're doing, of being together. And uh, so I looked on my mobile app. We was going to be going past Wendy's right to my house. And you could get a free Wendy's single with a mobile order. Well, let's mobile order. I like their uh, chicken sandwiches. I was going to get that. My wife said, you're not going to eat both of them. No, I said, I'll just take it home and I'll uh, uh, eat it for supper. And so we had to stop by church, get a couple things, do some things. And so I haven't had a Mountain Dew in a while, a Diet Mountain Dew. And so I opened up the fridge, pulled one out, and take want to take that home with me so I can enjoy whenever I needed it. Well, when we stopped by Wendy's, I like eating my hot food hot. So we went over into the parking lot on the other side of Wendy's and eating our sandwiches. Well, while we was eating, we noticed a vehicle down there close where the old Dick's was. And uh, look, you could tell someone lived out of the vehicle, by the way, that appeared and everything that was on it, in it, and everything. And we saw someone looking in a trash can and sitting down over beside the building. And my wife says, well, you think he would want uh, the hamburger? And I thought, man, you know, here's my Sunday school lesson. And I did, or the five minutes with Brother Curtis on Friday, and I, that morning, and I didn't even think of that. That made me feel so bad. So I said, well, we can check, see if he wants it or not. So whenever we was done, we went down. It was in a separate bag. I said, hey, sir, would you like a uh, Wendy's uh, hamburger? So we have an extra one. Sure, he'd like that. So he's walking over to get it. My wife says, well, how about a Mountain Dew? And I thought, now you're meddling, honey. That's mine. No, I'm just kidding. I, I didn't even think of that as well. So we give him the hamburger and the drink and God bless and everything like that. And the, the nice thing is my wife had not even watched the Five Minutes with Brother Curtis yet. She always usually does that towards the evening or sometimes when he has a little bit of time. But, you know, she was doing that. She took what she had was in her hand and use it for something good. So if you haven't watched Fridays, make sure you watch that. But that's just a testimony. I just, I felt bad because I wasn't the one that thought about it, and I just did the lesson on it. Well, here we are today in Proverbs chapter uh, 6, and we're going to look at a couple of different verses today. We're going to start out verse number 20. Follow along with me there, and it says this, My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. So if you can picture here, uh, of course, this is going to be uh, King Solomon and his wife and talking to his son and telling his son to keep his commandments and his, the law of his mother. And of course, here he's talking about the commandments of the Lord and the law of the Lord. These are the commandments and the law that a parent should teach their children. And so no doubt that this was the word of God that he is talking about. Look at verse number 21 now. It says this, bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. He said, bind them. That word bind means to tie. Tie them continually. That means today, whatever it is today you learn from God's word, 
tie that around your heart. What you learn tomorrow, tie that around your heart. Keep it. Okay, don't let it go. Uh, and it says, continually upon thine heart. Well, what is your heart? Well, your heart, of course, it's your will. It's the it's what's in you that makes your decisions. You know what? That's your heart. I mean, what comes out of your mouth? Remember, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 15, those things which proceed out of the mouth cometh from the heart. OK, so the, our actions, our actions result from what is inside of us. And that's where we're supposed to hide God's word. Remember, Psalms 119, 11 tells us by word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Well, that's what this verse is saying. Bind them, continue upon the heart. And then it says, and tie them upon thy neck. Tie them. That word uh, tie there means to lace. To lace is to draw together the edges. When I think of lacing something up, I think of my shoes. Okay, And I have to put my shoe, th shoe string through the laces to tie them. So the, his verse says, tie them about thy neck. Okay. upon your neck. Why would you put it upon your neck? I'm only thinking of two things here. If I put something around my neck, it's whenever it's cold outside and I want to keep myself warm and fuzzy. Well, I don't think the writer here is talking about putting your the word of God around your neck to keep you warm and fuzzy. The second thing I think about that, if you think about a lace and you tie something up, what do you want to do? You pull it tight and you pull it together. The lace around your neck around your throat is what that neck is there you're throwing to it. Why would it do that? Why would I put them around my neck? Why would I do that? Because when I'm hiding God's word in my heart and I'm putting it in with me, I'm going to be familiar with it that when I start doing the commandments that are wrong and I'm not obeying and I disregarding uh, what I have been learning, that's going to become like a noose around my neck and it's going to start strangling me. OK, and what happens when you want to start getting strangled? You have to have it loose, don't you? you have to tighten up. Well, that's what the word of God does. The conviction comes upon you when that word of God's in your heart. The conviction comes upon you and that's going to keep you from doing wrong. So that's why it's so important to hide God's word in our heart and bind it like a lace around our neck. Look at verse number 22 and it says this. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou goest, go and where? Through life. Uh, from the time you get up in the morning, from everything you do around the house, if you go outside, if you go shopping, if you go to work, if you go to school, whatever is your chores, whatever it is, that's where you're going. OK, and so uh, it says there, when thou goest, it shall lead thee. That word leads means to guide. It's going to guide you. It's going to help you with the right attitude. It's going to have the right spirit, the right worth eth ethics, the thing you should do when it goes. OK, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest. It shall keep thee. When it's speaking of sleeping, it's speaking of resting. It's speaking of nighttime. And nighttime is when we think of fear, when it's dark and we don't know what's going on. Well, it's going to keep. And that word keep means to guard. So it's going to guard. It's going to protect us. And then there in uh, the rest of the verse, it says, and when thou awaketh, it shall talk with thee. When you awake in the morning, it will talk with you. Say, Brother Curtis, how's the word of God going to talk with me? That's it. It's the word of of God. It's the words of God. Those words that you're hiding and you put in there, it's going to speak to you. Uh, uh, whatever it is you've been learning, it's, uh, it's going to lead you uh, in the way that you're supposed to go. All three stages of life are mentioned right there. All three light stages of the day. When you wake up, when you go through the day, and when you go to sleep at night. All three stages. The word of God is our guide. It is our guardian. And it's our companion. And that's why it's so important that we make sure we get and keep the law and the commandments that we've been learning. And then lastly, look at verse number six, uh, 23. It says, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of light. It reminds me of the verse Psalms 119 and 105 says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. Remember, you have a lamp, that lamp there. It's like a candle. And you see when you're holding a candle, when you're holding a lamp, you're seeing the things that's around you. You're, 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 uh, that word's going to help you with things right now. But the light, okay, that's what you shine ahead of you. And when you see trouble, you can avoid it. And you can look for the right path to that, right path to take with the light. And that's what the word of God does for you. And the last part of that verse says, and reproofs, okay, that's the instruction. 
that's the correction of, of instructions or the way of life. You know, there's times that we have to be reproved. Sometimes it's from our mom and dad. It could be from a teacher. It could be from a preacher. But you know what? Reproofs as well is God when he speaks to us. When we have the word of God laced around our neck, those instructions, those reproofs are when they, we start getting strangled. Okay, and it's hard to breathe and things like uh, start to go wrong. Okay, that's God getting our attention. Say, hey, remember this? You need to straighten up. And that's what God to us. Listen, you all have a great day. Uh, tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a, another special day. And then um, praying for you. You pray for me and just pray one for another. Remember, go for the room. Think about people where they sat and pray for them. And uh, love you guys. See you soon.